Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we moved up in Parliament, and we also did a ridiculous plan of the Amiable Vagabond to get Rapite out of jail, and it worked. So what I want to do right now is actually continue the quest from the Floating Parliament. Remember, we went to Karillan to pick up the ex-royal astronomer who had been exiled there by the Empress. We've picked them up, and now we need to take them to the Royal Society, where I am right now, so that they can observe the sun in... I forgot exactly what term. Something about the Old Testament of the sun or something? Um, let's do that. Assist the Royal Astronomer. He needs to use the Great Telescope. The First Secretary requires whatever findings the Astronomer can make. While the astronomers are authorized to use the Royal Society's equipment, there is a long waiting list. Members of the Society wait months for their turn on the Great Telescope, and even then, only with London say so. The Royal Astronomer's position doesn't give him any preferential treatment in this regard. Use your reputation to help skip the queue. Bribe my way in. Attempt to break into the observatory. Only a 70% chance, even with my high veils. Let's just use my reputation. You've earned a certain amount of sway with the Royal Society. There are complaints, but none loud enough to prevent you getting what you want. Soon, schedules are altered and the climb to the Observation Dome. Wait, schedules... Wait, what? Schedules are altered and the climb to the Observation Dome? Soon, the climb to the Observation Dome? I guess, like, technically that's a correct sentence. It's very weird, though. The Royal Astronomer busies himself with a great telescope. Brass cogs click and turn. When he emerges from his calculations, his face is ashen. He thrusts his findings into your hands. Here, take it. I never gave you this. Or saw it. You study his notes. Using the telescope, he was able to locate the last light cast by Albion's old sun, the one the Empire claims to have defeated five years ago. But according to his calculations, the light is centuries old. Albion's sun was dead long before the Empress came to the skies. Huh. We've learned quite a bit about... Well, I, I guess not quite a bit, but... We learned that Albion and her renewed majesty didn't actually kill the sun, but I didn't realize it died long before they even came here. How do they keep it such a secret? Wouldn't it have been obvious when people first got to the skies that there was no sun? So then nobody would believe that they killed it after arriving. Okay, I think we're supposed to go back. Oh, hello! Let me just pause for a second. I was just on my way to the Floating Parliament, and uh, actually I wanted to go to the Well of the Wolf first to do something that we had to wait to do. Just got into this fight, and look at this! This is the first time we've seen the... They're called the Liberators, right? The Tackety Liberators, the giant refuel station flamethrower things. Let's watch it fight this Marauder. You go, Liberator. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, let me get this cantankery. That is really cool. Do it again. Do it again. Oh, it even has... It doesn't just have the flamethrower. It also has a small gun. I'm very bad at aiming the side cannons. I want to see it destroy with the side things. Come on, go for it. No, don't blow it up like that. You go, buddy. You can do it. 
Ooh, 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 this looks good. Yes, 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 yes. Ah, oh, damn it. Oh, it's even got a gun on the back, like a shotgun. It has a lot of hit points, too. I don't... I don't know if it's smoking at all from damage. It's hard to tell, because it's letting off a lot of smoke normally. But yeah, I thought that thing just had flamethrowers, but no, it's got a small gun on the front and a shotgun on the back. Oh, is that going to do it? It hit it. It didn't blow it up, though. That thing is so badass. Ah, oh, I just shot it to death. Good try. So does that thing not have a name? If you shine your light on it, you're supposed to see its name, but I guess the Liberators don't have names. Unlike the normal ships. Yeah. Whoa, nice piloting. Might want to ration their brandy rations, too. Just like the scouts. <laughs> Alright, let's head back to the Well of the Wolf. through the gale and land on a shelf of ice. Probably gonna fail. Yep. I only lost one hole. <laughs> the well winds drag insistently at you as you descend. You lurch forward and your driver curses. The pistons thunder in resistance. The boiler roars. The mouth of the well blooms before you black as schoolroom ink. It fills your windscreen. In desperation, your driver drops you precipitously. You strike the ice while there's still ice to strike, and grind to a battered halt. Okay, so before, I wanted to understand the, like, s s form of step communication that they were using as a crude form of correspondence, I think it is what it said. But I think I had to wait for the well winds to be annoyed again so that they do another one of their ceremonies so I can observe it. I don't remember where I do that. Oh yeah, here we go. Listen to the first hymn. The devils gather at the bandstand. You watch closely as they begin to shuffle. Your fragmentary knowledge of the dance alphabet may be able to discern some meaning. It's hard to see where a sigil begins and ends. Worse, their true meaning is hidden in the relationship between them. You're certain the right is a lament, but struggle to identify who for, until you realize the congregation is using many names for one individual. You decipher them as best you can. The singular choir? No. The choir in one? The many-mouthed? The master of... No. The king of celebrants? No. The king of carols? These are the names of the thing in the well. Huh. If you bring additional devils to join the choir, the congregation may be able to perform new hymns. Or, uh, where do I get devils to join the choir? Is that a thing I can do at Caduceus, maybe, after I actually become a part of their group? I remember I needed, I think, three moments of inspiration to do that. Interesting. I definitely want to learn more. Alright, on to the floating parliament. At parliament. Let's get rid of some terror. The perpetual protest. I think ignoring the protest lowers my terror. Yeah. Disrupt proceedings with a perfect pangolin, as always. Some salons do gossip. Visit the first secretary. Wait, I'm... Hmm? I'm supposed to talk with him for the quest, right? I don't think it's any of these options. Do I do it somewhere else? I'm 
confused. Oh, here we go. Present the dignity of Albion Bill. The First Secretary has fired up the whips in your absence. It's time to present it to the House. I don't even know what this bill actually does. The bot MPs wave the dignity of Albion Bill through before you're halfway through your opening statement. Those who would have opposed it watch the shadows fearfully. The House votes overwhelmingly for her renewed majesty to once again respect the decisions of Parliament and the people it occasionally represents. Just as overwhelming is the relief of every other MP that they aren't the ones with their names on the bill. The First Secretary meets you afterwards. Excellent. Very good. Just across our T's, however, I think we should run this through the House of Lords for their approval. I'm sure I have the keys somewhere. Ah, here we go. Just a formality, you understand. Okay, this bill sounds good. I mean... Fuck her renewed majesty and also the government should listen to its goddamn people? Also, I don't understand what the royal astronomer was about, though. Why was that needed at all for this? I guess it's just... I guess we were getting, like, blackmail material? Right? Because we got evidence <clears throat> that her renewed majesty did not kill the sun. It's been dead for a long time. So that's like blackmail material, I guess. Something like that. I don't know. Maybe. Hmm. I now have the key to the House of Lords. Let's do it. Enter the House of Lords. Her renewed majesty's favorite lords were escorted to the luxury of the serene mausoleum. Nobody has heard from the rest in years. The eye-burning stink of ammonia hits you first, followed by the buzzing of flies. The lords sit dead at their benches, surrounded by the empty bottles with which they happily drank themselves into oblivion. Pools of maggots writhe on the floor and drip off tables, fed for generations on the copious bounty of their lordship's necrotic flesh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <sighs> but parliamentary protocol must be carried out. You clear your throat and officially propose the dignity of Albion Bill to the audience's empty eye sockets and hollow ears. It's a lengthy bill, but the lords are polite enough to listen in silence. There are thankfully no objections. What the fuck? <laughs> Alright, cool. D uh, do I go back to the first secretary now? Ask about the dignity of Albion Bill. You've done your part so far. What's the next step? Not here, you fool. The first secretary gestures down the corridor. Anybody could be listening, he whispers. He slides something to you from his side of the table. A key. The Empress's Tower. Tonight. Come alone. Wait, what is this? You can keep this appointment by visiting the Palace of... Highminster? What's the Palace of Highminster? I don't know, but I'm going to the Victoria Tower. First it was the King's Tower. Now it stands as a tribute to the Empress. Everybody avoids it if they possibly can. You climb the stairs past opulent rooms that now play host to little but dust, moths, and the occasional sleeping bat. On the top floor, the First Secretary looks out at Albion through an open window. Its panes encrusted with years of neglect. 
You came, he says. Perhaps we can be saved after all. Treasonous talk in the Victoria Tower. I love the sound of that. The First Secretary stares out at Albion. We were told that the Empress conquered Albion's son and founded our new enduring empire on its ashes. A lie. Now, with your help, we have proof. Albion's son, its judgment, was extinguished long before we came here. Ask for more details. Why all the secrecy? Don't you see? Without right of conquest, we are no better than squatters in this territory. Albion no more belongs to us than a dog belongs to its fleas. Or so I believe the other sons would see it. The closest son rules the Blue Kingdom. Were the truth to come out, it would not sit idly by. In that truth, there's opportunity, a chance to restore order, to dethrone the Empress and her clockwork son, to restore the will of the people. Through their, duly, through their duly appointed representatives and humble functionaries, naturally. He turns back to the view. We would be holding an empire hostage to coerce its monarch into doing the right thing. But it is the price of dignity. It is worth paying. I love where this is going. Please tell me I can be involved in this whole thing. Push the traitor from the tower. <laughs> no, this is an easy one. Agree to the plan. Perhaps he's right. Perhaps it's simply better he believes you think so. No, he's definitely right. United and treachery. The first secretary breathes a sigh of relief. I knew that I could count on you. Together we will restore democracy for the next thousand years. Here. I've prepared everything you require. Take it to the Blue Kingdom. I fear I cannot protect you from the Empress's likely wrath. I can only promise that any sacrifice you make will not be in vain. Okay, where am I taking it in the Blue Kingdom? And what exactly is it? Deliver the Dignity of Albion Bill to the Throne of Ours or the Blue Kingdom. Oh, the throne of ours if I want to just throw it away, basically. Tip them off to what's being done. Well, I'm obviously not doing that. It just says take it to the Blue Kingdom, though. That's The Blue Kingdom isn't a specific place. It's a whole region. So, like, where in the Blue Kingdom? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Sky Barnet. Seems likely. Seems very likely because there's even a London embassy there. After a lot of traveling. Oh. Compulsory knees up. Failure. Gain tear. Oh my god. Please. Additional ration of brandy. Like I was saying, after a lot of traveling, I'm now in Aklis, in Eleutheria. So I think there's two big things I want to do in Eleutheria, and probably some smaller stuff. But the big things are I want to go back to Langley Hall to bring the Super Lipsarian that may be Langley's lover. And actually at Ackley's itself, where we are right now, uh, we can continue the Amiable Vagabond's quest. I also want to go back to Paranesi and build some more rapport with the guides and stuff like that. I also want to go to Caduceus with a bunch of moments of inspiration and finally join them for real. So yeah, quite a bit to do here, actually. The War of Midnight continues. Help Sigrid's Ringbreaker Urchin's probably going to fail. Yeah, I think we lose a crew or two. Four crew? Jesus. Sorry. Patrolling with the ring Ringbreakers. Forge in the swamps. Got some verdant seeds. That's pretty terrible, to be honest. Let's get a port report. All 
Alright, the Ackley's signs. The Skylarks have carved their glyphs into one of the wooden posts at the station's periphery. As you and the Vagabond approach, you find a wildly unkempt man slumped nearby, surrounded by a small fortress of empty bottles. You a Skylark? asks the Vagabond. So what if I am? slurs the man. Skylarks aren't supposed to get drunk near the station, grumbles the Vagabond. Gives us a bad name among the crews and the captains. It's against the code, and I should know, because I wrote it. Let's sober the Skylark up with a good horror story. He stares up at you and attempts a rude gesture. He ends up poking himself in the eye. <laughs> you crouch next to the gin-soaked Skylark and launch into a story about the predators that lurk in the darkness above. Their scope for cruelty matched only by the vastness of their apathy. In the face of unimaginable, omnivorous scorn, you say, the only thing we can cling to is a code. To abandon the Skylark code is to subside. By the time you're finished, he's pale as a bedsheet and apologizes for his inebriation. The Vagabond chuckles and claps you on the back. You crouch beside the post and examine the signs that have been carved down its length. The stickman above three squares tells us that Ackley's is a good place to fence stolen goods, translates the vagabond, tracing signs with one filth-blackened finger. The three lines connecting the badge and the sock means the local police are urchins. The pipe in the smiling face means you can buy good tobacco at below market rates. Search for the sign without meaning. If Quivers was right, one of these signs doesn't have a translation. The Vagabond hands you his codebook. Comparing the signs scratched on the post to the Vagabond's well-worn codebook, you find one that lacks a translation. Circle within spiral within teardrop. A sign more intricate than those that surround it. When you point it out, the Vagabond whistles. That's new, he says, pulling a pencil stub from behind his ear and copying it. I'll cross-reference it to the other Skylark signs and see if I can arrive at a meaning. He slips the book back into his pocket and lifts the drunk Skylark to his feet. What's your name, friend? he asks amicably, steering him away from the station. Need to help them study it. Okay. It's a circle within a spiral within a teardrop. Huh. Hmm. I feel like it must have to do with the suns, right? The circle's probably a sun. The Vagabond is speaking earnestly with the drunk Skylark. While he's occupied, you spot Ratbite. She's followed you from the engine. Now she tries to hurry away. You follow. When you catch up, you find her shaking with fear. Don't trust him, she whispers. I've heard stories. They call him Old Tom. If the rumors are right... A heavy hand on your shoulder. What's this about rumors? Asks the vagabond with a broad smile. Wait. Wait. This is Old Tom from Old Tom's Well? From the story about Old Tom's Well? I forgot what it, what it was exactly, but I think Old Tom made a final wish at the well and ended up disappearing. I think they got rich before they disappeared, though, which would explain the mansion. Holy shit, this is Old Tom. I don't know why I wouldn't trust him just because he's Old Tom, though. I don't... But old Tom isn't evil, as far as I know. Hmm. So I can tell Ratbite basically to shut up, and that'll improve my friendship with the Vagabond. 
change the topic, no one knows what we were talking about, or just outright ask the vagabond if he's hiding anything. Hmm. I don't want to put Rapide in danger. I'm going to smoothly change topic. The vagabond doesn't need to know what you were discussing here. You ask the vagabond about his conversation with the drunk Skylark. He studies you for a moment, his expression opaque. Finally, he relents and begins regaling you at length with tidbits about the drunk fellow's travels and personal history. You walk together back to the engine, the vagabond's hand firm on your shoulder, Ratbite following sullenly. When you interrogate her afterwards, Ratbite seems to regret saying anything at all. She insists she's told you everything she knows. Study Quiver's Book of Mysterious Signs. Perhaps it will reveal the location of the Sugar Spun Garden. Or at least of its author. The amiable vagabond sits at his desk, puffing thoughtfully on his pipe. He's copied out the untranslated signs from Quiver's notebook and added the one you discovered at Ackley's. They're new signs, but familiar says the vagabond variations and combinations of existing symbols we should be able to decipher them now they're complete help him decipher the signs if you leave him alone he entirely loses focus he'd rather spend his time playing the fiddle or getting up to mischief with the crew After hours of discussion, dozens of messy diagrams, and an industrial quantity of coffee, you manage to piece together the meaning. They're claiming that the sugar spun garden can be found within Old Tom's well, says the vagabond, sitting back and stroking his beard. That must be where our man Quivers has gone. This is the last thing I expected. You ask him why. His laugh is bereft of humor. Because I am Old Tom, and I can assure you that no paradise awaits within the well that bears my name. Okay. So they're not really keeping it a secret, then? Gained a moment of inspiration. Nice. Ask why the Vagabond hid his identity for so long. I mean, I don't know, did they really keep their past a secret from me? I think we just never talked about it. You've heard the crew telling stories of old Tom and his wish in the well. Why did the Vagabond keep his past a secret? Why do you think I left my mansion in Lustrum? asks the Vagabond. It wasn't just the Wanderlust. I have debts and enemies, comrade. Enemies and debts. Not least among them is my sister, who has always been jealous of my success. She'd stop at nothing to bring me down, and she's powerful in her own right. Ask the Vagabond if they saw anything within Old Tom's will. According to legend, he made a wish and it was granted. The Vagabond shudders. Aye, I saw gold. A gleam of gold amid a copse of pale trees, and nothing else but darkness. It spoke to me, in a voice like lightning striking an oak, and I made an offer. I accepted. You pry further, but he is reticent. What else is there to say, he mutters. It made me rich. Others have journeyed to the well since then, seeking their fortunes, but I'm the only one it spoke to. I don't know why. Okay, what was this offer, though? It made you rich. Okay, that's what you were given, but what did you give to it? Ask why the Skylark signs led to Old Tom's Well, or lead to Old Tom's Well. Someone's hidden a code within a code, and it points to the abyss that bears the Vagabond's name. My sister. The Vagabond injects a viper's worth of venom into the word. She's formed a cult which clings to the well's edge and worships the thing that dwells within. Chasing on my heels, as always. 
It has never talked to her. Only to me. His eyes glitter gloatingly for a moment. Perhaps she thinks she can change that through sacrifice. Perhaps that's why, that's why she's luring Skylarks to her lair. He taps the ash from his pipe, staring through the window. We must stop her. It's my duty as a king to protect my people. Raise the question of journeying to Old Tom's Well. Quivers must have gone there seeking paradise and many other Skylarks besides. The Vagabond grimaces. That was the only condition of my bargain with the thing in the well, he says. I could never go back. He taps his chin thoughtfully. But I always knew that one day I'd need to return. So when I was living in Lustrum, I sent for all sorts of scholars, mystics, engineers. In the end, they devised a ritual that could break the curse. To complete it, I'll need to go to the Leadbetter and Stainrod Nature Reserve. He gazes at you for a moment as though weighing you up. And I'll need your help 